All right, case number eight is a Shea biopsy. And I like this one because it shows two lesions. And uh, this disease is Veruca plana or flat warts. And so Veruca plana are much more subtle than Veruca vulgaris. Veruca vulgaris have the, the prominent papillomatosis with finger-like projections and tears of perikeratosis in intoing of the reedy. And if you need a refresher on that, I've got a very long uh, in-depth video about Veruca. And I've also got a short video about Veruca. I'll put links to those down below. You can go check it out. But Veruca plana look quite different. They're very subtle and they're easy to misdiagnose if you're not familiar with them. Uh, but what you see is a kind of subtle acanthosis. The epidermis is a little thicker than normal to the side. There is subtle vague papillomatosis, but it's kind of more of a gentle rolling or undulating little hills rather than finger-like projections. And in those areas of acanthosis and undulating subtle papillomatosis, you will see very prominent enlarged vaculated keratinocytes. So the nuclei get large and they get pale or, pale or clear cytoplasm around them. So these are coilocytes, but they are kind of a different unique pattern of coilocyte that you, that you see in, in uh, flat warts in Veruca plana. And uh, they are usually abundant and uh, present all through the upper spinous layer and the granular layer here. And uh, not th for coilocytes, and my long Veruca video goes in, in depth on this and shows you many examples of coilocytes. But for coilocytes, I don't care just about seeing pale or clear cytoplasm. I wanna see large nuclei plus usually pale or clear cytoplasm. But the nuclei get kind of paradoxically enlarged as they approach the granular layer when they're HPV infected cells, as opposed to normal keratinocytes, which start getting smaller and smaller as they get towards the top of the granular layer. All right, so these cells, some people have called bird's eye cells. I don't know that birds have eyeballs that look like this, but in any case, bird's eye cells are the type of kind of pale uh, coilocyte that you see in Veruca plana. And then of course, you'll see also hypergranulosis, which is a characteristic feature of, of you know, all types of Veruca and uh, HPV driven uh, warts. So this is uh, Veruca plana, and here we have one lesion of it. And then over here, we have kind of more normal-ish epidermis and then another Veruca plana. And so the reason this is nice and the, oh, the bird's eye cells, the coilocytes are even better here, right? The reason this is helpful is that Veruca plana are often present as multiple lesions, either grouped together in the same area or present in a linear fashion along a site of previous excoriation or trauma. Or, you know, like trauma, people sometimes will get this where they shave, you know, with the razor blade and they shave and that traps the virus along the skin at an area that kind of uh, erodes or damages the skin from the razor blade, kind of, you know, uh, shaving off the top part of skin. And then the viral, uh, the viral organisms contaminate that area and then start growing in it and make a linear uh, pattern. So that pattern is called Kebnerization. The Kebner phenomenon is when you have any sort of a uh, process that tracks along a site of previous trauma. And it's a, a classically seen in a variety of different entities, but one of those entities is Veruca plana. So they often are present as multiple lesions associated closely with one another. So if you get a big enough shave biopsy, you can sometimes see two or, or even three or four uh, uh, little tiny foci of Veruca plana in the same biopsy. So I think that's nice on this shave here because it uh, drives home that point. So the, the last thing I wanted to make uh, or tell you about Veruca plana is that when the coilocytes, if the coilocytes are a little bit more subtle, sometimes Veruca plana can look a lot like lichen simplex chronicus or paragonodularis, which is basically both the same thing, just a difference clinically. But those are reactive thickening of the skin uh, from chronic scratching, rubbing, itching, or, or irritation. The, the epidermis gets acanthotic, hypergranulosis, uh, hyperkeratosis, mostly ortho, but sometimes a little para. And all of those things together, especially if you get a little artificial vacuation of the cells, LSC can get papillomatosis, subtle papillomatosis. I've seen that many times on top of lichen simplex chronicus and paragonodularis. So I, I often struggle with, uh, if I see something that I know the patient's been scratching at and it looks like LSC or parigo, but there's some subtle papillomatosis, sometimes I wonder if there could maybe be a pre-existing wart and I'll add a comment that 
you know, there could possibly be an underlying Veruca that was pre-existent that the patient then has, has been scratching and itching, but I can't tell for sure. So sometimes if I'm not sure, I'll add a comment like that. But just know that, um, that if you struggle telling LSC apart from Veruca plana, so do I sometimes. And I'm, uh, I'm not sure, especially if I don't have good clinical information. So that's one uh, differential. But other than that, really, this is a pretty, um, pretty distinct appearance if you've got a well-developed example. So that's nice. Uh, Veruca plana, and here's more of it up here. On the right, we got one, and on the left, uh, there, this is a nice example of how subtle they can be. See, if you have that, I mean, that's only just very vague thickening, very vague hypergranulosis, subtle little bird's eye coilocytes. So, on ones like this, sometimes I'll say it's suggestive of Veruca plana. I'm not 100% sure. So, um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe some people say that you should always be black and white, but I'd rather be honest and be gray sometimes and say, I'm just not 100% sure on this case. And I'd rather be honest with my dermatologists. And uh, uh, that's just the way that I do things. All right, now let's move on to case nine.